An Introduction to Naturalism and Stephen Crane's The Open Boat. Naturalism is similar to realism, and they both contain the same Darwinian and deterministic viewpoints, but to an extreme. The writer often chooses an unattractive, burdened, or handicapped character. It tends to have violence that is overt and often graphic. It also is more likely to display sexuality in the previous forms of literature. There is an atavistic element to naturalism. This means showing human behavior as reduced to animal instincts. Often the writer attempts to make a character representative of an entire social class. Naturalism sometimes represents humans as dwarfed by the technology that they've created. Within naturalism, nature tends to be hostile. The overall tone is usually pessimistic and generally the heroes fail in a big way. Naturalism is also amoral. They view nature or society as without morals, not immoral, just not bound by morality. This view suggests that the distinctions of morality are unimportant. People seek power and survival no matter what. However, this cynical tone usually underlies a kind of moral judgment the author is making in asking us to feel sad for these characters' incompleteness or hollowness. Elements of naturalism can be seen in the stories of Willa Cather, Stephen Crane, Jack London, Theodore Dreiser, and many others. Stephen Crane lived from 1871 to 1900. By his mid-teens, he was writing newspaper articles due to his brother's newspaper co connections. As a reporter, he became aware of the great poverty on the streets of New York. He wrote his first novel about this, entitled Maggie, A Girl of the Streets. This novel looks at how a poor girl could be forced into prostitution and attacks the strict morality that blames her for it. The novel tried to show that that one's environment shapes one's life. Therefore, it justifies people of weak morality. Crane also wrote The Red Badge of Courage, about a young idealistic boy fighting in the Civil War. Despite his young age, Crane became a famous writer and journalist in his 20s. The Open Boat is a semi-fictional story based on true events, he was aboard the Commodore when it sank. He survived in the ocean for 30 hours before landing on the coast of Florida. Crane died very young, at age 28, of tuberculosis. Nature in the Open Boat Within the story, the narrator describes nature as neither a friend nor an active enemy. Rather, nature is merely indifferent to his existence. He and his boatmates are dwarfed by the sheer power and size of nature. An example of this can be seen in the shark that hangs around their boat at night. As the story progresses, the correspondent begins to realize that nature doesn't care if he lives or dies. More on this is seen when the correspondent sees the wind tower as a symbol of nature's presence but indifference. Is this story trying to push an appreciation of nature? Not really. However, we often ignore nature's power and presence until faced with danger or death at its hands. Note in the, that in the beginning, because the men are so intent on survival, they do not focus on the color of the sky or looking around at nature at all. However, as the story progresses and they start to more strongly consider the possibility and inevitability of death, more description of nature is included, even discussing the color of the sky. Interestingly, the author writes that it was probably glorious numerous times to emphasize that there was a recognition of the awesome power of nature, but that in the moment itself, there wasn't time to dwell on such thoughts. Is there a consideration of God or a higher power in this story? Yes, but the characters come to realize this, that this higher power may be indifferent to their fate. This is likely the reason for the repetition of the one phrase regarding why the seven gods of the sea would allow them to come so close to land, yet only to drown. 
Is this story a morality tale? No, not at all. Whether a person believes in God or does what's right or wrong seems irrelevant to whether they survive or not. The oiler, Billy, seems like a very good man, maybe even the strongest and most disciplined among them, yet he is the one who dies. Death is indiscriminate and is part of nature. It is nature's final act. It is not vengeful. The correspondent comes to feel empathy for the death of others, and particularly for those who die outside the bounds of normal life. This is seen when he begins thinking about a poem he'd read in school about a soldier dying alone in Algiers. He begins to find empathy for this man, something he'd never really felt before. Near the end of the story, the correspondent realizes that in moments of extreme exhaustion, there is some relief in death, in drowning. The agony is at least over. Death is not fair. Again, Billy dies right at the shore, even though he at first seems like he's going to be the most successful. The story seems to suggest that one should not be so quick to hope. The old phrase goes, don't count your chickens before they're hatched. The men in this story make the classic mistake of celebrating their rescue too soon, when they see land, and they even smoke cigars. Only moments later, their chances of getting on dry land are dashed. Why doesn't the author use names for the characters instead of using their occupations? There is a certain brutishness into one's, into one's identity being ignored. But in these moments of survival, their whole focus is on the task at hand, not on the human drama outside survival. In some ways, this is more realistic. It also serves as a bit dehumanizing, making each life less significant. Note that the only character whose name is used repeatedly, Billy, ends up being the one who actually dies. Within the discussion board, we'll discuss why that might be. The narrator suggests that a very close bond among these men is being developed during this story, but nobody mentions it. The narrator, the correspondence, even calls it the best experience of his life. The men in this boat want an orderly world. Thus, they want things to work the way they are supposed to, and for every detail to mean something. Yet within the story, we see a number of elements that don't have clear meaning. Why is the guy on the shore waving a black coat? Why don't the people on shore send out a boat to save them? We never receive an answer to these details. Instead, their meaning is unclear. Within the discussion board, we're going to talk about the point of view in this story. Why didn't Crane use first person? This would have made a lot of sense, particularly since it's based largely on Crane's actual own experiences in this situation. We're also going to discuss personification. At the very end of the story, the sea is described as having a voice, and that these men could be its interpreters. We're going to discuss what the sea might have been saying in the, the author's view.